Hello friends. Today we are going to see how exactly eVPN configuration and how it works. So we will see all the route types like route type 1, 2, 3 and 4. And we will check it how exactly it works in the control plane and data plane. Before proceeding with the configuration, my <coughs> my underlying network is working fine. my isi agency is up my ldp is up and i have configured the bgp as well for l2 vpn e vpn family so it is up so if you want to see the bgp configuration so here i have configured the family l2 vpn e vpn So let's deep dive into the configuration part. Let's configure on the PE one first. So my interface is zero 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 three that is connected to CE one. This is the topology where PE one and PE two are connected to CE one and PE three is connected to CE two that is single homing and PE one and PE two are multi homing. so we will try here single active scenario means only one link will be forwarding on the between c1 p1 and p2 so we can say that this particular link is going to forward and this will be blocked so we will see this single active scenario in the evpn let's see the configuration first So I'm configuring the interface EFP encapsulation dot one Q hundred connect. This is the we are done with the EFP. Now we will configure the EVPN configuration. EVPN. So we need to define the EVI. EVI means EVPN Virtual Instance. So we can correlate that one with the VRF in the IP forwarding paradigm. So it's both are similar. We will just give the name as hundred. And if you don't configure the RD and RT, it will take by default. But to be on safer side, I'll configure the RD. route target import and export so this advertise my command is must if you don't have this command then whatever layers to mac address advertisement is there into bgp it won't happen so once you learn the mac any mac address uh, from any bum frame or any other frame so pe2 will generate the uh, route type 2 and he will forward it to the remote pe to advertise that route type 2 you need to configure this command advertise mac So here is our EVI configuration. Now we need to configure the ESI value. That is Ethernet segment identifier. So ESI, you can see that for this both link, for this both link which is connected to same C, will have same ESI value for both. So let us see Ethernet segment. Identify type. By default, it is zero. So let us see for twelve dot twelve dot twelve dot twelve dot twelve dot twelve. 
so this is our complete eva configuration so here rd and rt and then esi value we have configured for multi homing but in case of single homing this ethernet segment configuration is not required so we will commit this configuration and let's jump to the l2vpn configuration now so l2vpn we need to configure the bridge group first so let's say it is evpn then we need to configure the bridge domain let's say it is evpn for evi 100 then we need to call the interface efp under the bridge domain So we need to configure the EVI under the bridge domain. So this is it with the L2 VPN configuration. It is very simple. We configure the bridge group, bridge domain EVPN 100, and then we call that interface under that bridge domain, and then we call that EVI under the bridge domain. So that's it from the EVI, EVPN, and L2 VPN configuration perspective. So if we commit here, so once you commit this configuration, a route type one, three, and four should be generated. So if we see here. we have generated the route type 1 3 and 4 let us see it so this is sorry we need to paste it completely yeah so if you see here this is the type 1 route So we have two type one route here. One is for the EVI EAD EVI generated by EVI that is EVI Ethernet Auto Discovery, and second is the Ethernet segment Ethernet Auto Discovery. So first EVI EAD is used for the aliasing on the other router, and the Ethernet segment. ethernet auto discovery is used for this split horizon level so let's see this let us pin evpn rd 1.1.1.0 oops So you can see this is the ES EAD route where it has generated the ESI level that we called as a split horizon level as well.
let's check the layer 3 route that is for the multicast traffic so in case if any bump traffic hits on on the PE then he will generate the, he will attach that multicast route because suppose PE3 has advertised the multicast label towards this he will say that he will say to PE1 and PE2 if you want to send me the multicast traffic use this label so let's say it had advertised the L3 label So while forwarding that bomb traffic towards the PE3, he will attach the TL3 label and on top of that one, it will be transport level that will be generated by the LDP and it will forward towards PE3. This multicast label is used only for the bomb traffic. For the unicast traffic, you will have the label associated with the route type 2 that will be generated by the PE, uh, the respective PE which is generating that route type so let's see the multi route route type 3 that is inclusive multicast so if you see here for multicast it has generated the label so PE1 will say to PE3 and PE2 that if you want to send me the label sorry if you want me to send the multicast tra any bump uh, traffic then use this 24120 label so whenever PE3 will have any bump traffic he will attach this label and then top one will be the transport level and he will send it to the res respective PEs. And in the multi homing scenario, In the multi homing scenario, one router will be DF and other will be the non DF. Otherwise, we saw the challenges earlier that if we don't use that one, then frame will con the frame will continuously uh, loop and then whole network may go down because L2 frame don't have TTL value as whatever we have in the IP packet. And suppose if PE2 forwarding that broadcast or bump traffic, PE1 will send it back to C1 and C1 will send it back to PE2. So, so it will be continuously in the loop. So to avoid that one, split uh, route type 4 is generated by both router PE1 and PE2. So based on that one, they will elect who is going to be designated forwarder for that particular segment so this is we say that this for this particular segment they will see a p1 and p2 will elect who is going to designated forwarder for and who is going to be non-designated forwarder so in this scenario we are using 100 so generally concept is that so e1 means for 0 2 4 6 lowest PE is the designated forwarder so in this case we have 100 EVA configured EVA number so in this scenario PE1 will be the designated forwarder for us and to load balance those scenario because if PE1 becomes designated forward for all the EVIs then all the traffic will hit to PE1 and it's become very difficult so to load balance that scenario for odd EVI, let's say 1, 3, 5, for odd EVI, highest IP address is DF. So in this case, PE2 will be the 
df in this odd evi scenario so let us see the type for show bgp l to e vpn e vpn So if you see here D, DF election and this is the e, e, ESI import, import value is there. So based on that one it will see that okay both the routers P1 and P2 belongs to same extended community and it will import that one by seeing this ES import value and based on their router ID they will do the election and in this scenario P1 will win that one and it, it will become the designated forward router so if you see in this scenario So here you are just seeing the peering detail 1 because 2 we haven't yet configured. So let's configure PE2 and then see all the route types. So let me configure the EFP first. encapsulation.1q that is VLAN is 100 let's move to eVPN configuration eVPN EVI it's a hundred let's configure the RT and RT let's say 100 colon 2 route target import 100 100 route target export 100 cousin 100 so we need to configure the advertise mac Then we need to configure the Ethernet segment identifier. Identifier zero is default, so we same the same value we need to configure whatever we configured on P1. And if we see our eVPN configuration, so it is EVI 100 we configured, BGP route target and route distinguisher, advertise MAC is must to advertise those MAC address and then Ethernet segment identifier for that particular multi homing scenario. Let's commit this configuration and let's go to the L2 VPN config. bridge group let's say evpn bridge domain let's say evpn for 100 evr we need to call that interface and then we need to call that evi number and that's it for the layer 2 vpn configuration once we commit this configuration all the route types will be generated by PE2 as well whatever we saw earlier on the PE1 so let's see that before committing that configuration so we see that we don't have any route received from the PE2 router 
right and uh, we don't have any 1 2 and 4 from the PE2 router so once we commit this configuration we will see all the routes generated so if we see here we have received four route types that is es ead evi ead then inclusive multicast and last one is ethernet segment route so let us see one by one yep. so you can see here we have learned this route type 3 from R2 we have learned this ESEAD from R2 this is EVI EAD so if you see the L2 VPN status now it should be show up between these both devices it is up and if we see the earlier output Ethernet segment details so here you will get the split horizon label as well as the DF election status so if you see here it's saying to reach this particular ethernet segment router we have two next stops that is PE1 and PE2 so you can see here ESI value is same for both and as we say earlier this is single active scenario and now we can see the peering detail is PE1 and PE2 so in this scenario once we configured on PE2 DF election has happened and then one forwarder has been chosen from the both options and you can see that for this EVI 100 PE1 has been selected as an elected router this is the split horizon label received from PE2 let's see this output on the PE2 it's the same output but you will see the difference here so if we see here forwarder has been chosen one but this p2 router is not elected so it is not it is in the not elected means this is the non designated forwarder so you can see that local split horizon level is 4 and remote split horizon level is not so in this scenario this has become non df and the p1 become de designated forwarder for EVA 100 so we know that if a bump traffic comes from the any other router either it could be from p1 or it could be from p2 so this non designated forward is going to discard that one and keep in mind it is applicable only for the bump traffic broadcast unknown unicast and multicast traffic but unicast traffic he can forward p2 can forward there is no restrictions on unicast because unicast will not have any looping scenario so in this scenario this p2 is not going to forward but let's say the scenario where because generally this will be the bundle on the ce side so he can send either this side or the, he can send either this side so he will do the load balance so let's say bump traffic received on the pe2 right and not non designated forward is applicable only when sending traffic towards the ce route ce1 router so he will block but he can receive the traffic from ce so he will forward 
and uh, if he sends those using so this is the bum traffic he will attach the multicast label which we received via type 3 from these two routers so he will attach that label and he will send it to the respective ps so if p1 received that frame because this is bum frame and p1 is allowed to forward that frame and if he forwards again then we are landing again to the same scenario where loop situation occurs to avoid that scenario p1 has generated this split horizon label that we can see here that this is the local label and this is the remote label so let's see start our configuration on the p3 side solution dot one q hundred so ev evpn evi is number is hundred bgp rd let's say hundred colon three route target it should be same on the all the routers like it is same like whatever we config we used to configure for vrf advertise mac and that's it we don't need to configure any ethernet segment identifier because this is the single homing router so in that case by default it will be zero and it is not required let's move to l2 vpn configuration l2 vpn bridge group let's say evpn bridge domain is for evpn it's for 100 let's call the efp under the bridge domain and here is our evi so here we see that this is our l2 pin configuration before permit you can check that we don't have any routes from the PE3 so once we commit we should get some routes from PE3 yep yeah. that is only one it is showing because that will be the route type inclusive multicast because in the single homing scenario you don't need the ethernet segment auto discovery route or EVI auto discovery route you don't need the type 4 that is ethernet segment identifier that is used for split horizon only you need the multicast and once the single homing router learns the once the single homing router gets the frame from C router he will learn that MAC address and he will generate the type 2 and he will send it to the remote P routers along with the MAC address and uh, unicast label for that particular mac that's the reason you are only seeing here only single type 2 so if you see here show l2 vpn bridge domain so we are up
okay got it got it got it so mistake we did here that evpn here it should be 100 dot 100 so now here you are seeing that remote split horizon label as well here because earlier we did some mistake in the configuration because export was 100 colon 1 so that was the causing the issue so if we see here show evpn internal label for the vpn id 100 so you can see that we have two labels for evi e, uh, ethernet auto discovery evi So once the any P routers get the bump uh, frame from the CE, he will learn the source MAC address based on the whatever L2 VPN forwarding paradigms are there. So based on that one, he will learn the MAC address and then he will generate the route type 2 towards the P1 and P2. It will contain the MAC address and the label information to reach that particular map and along with that one this is the first step and second step is that whatever bump traffic comes he will attach the multi multicast label and then on top of that one transport label and he will forward that bump frame towards the p1 and p2 so this side it is data plane learning but once that frame learn by the source map learn by the pe3 he will generate the bgp route type 2 so that we called as control plane learning but once this bump traffic reach here he will forward that bump traffic to here so c1 will learn that mac address based on the data plane learning 